welcome back. I'm Jackie and I'm a feminine and inner work coach. And today's video, I'm going to be going through why a feminine woman, a woman in her feminine is in her body. And what does that mean? So if you're looking to have better relationships, better sex in your relationship, more healthier choices around your own health and vitality and just a lot more awareness around your emotional capacity so you can make better choices, you can feel better throughout your day because really how you feel in your day is determines how you feel in your entire life. Like it's just like a simple breakdown of how you feel. Tony Robbins says this all the time. It's like your emotion determines your day and it like determines how your day goes, determines how your life goes in the long term of like how many days you have that you live. Yeah, I'm gonna break that down for you. I'm gonna give you three tips to tap more into your body and to really ignite those feminine qualities so you can live more at ease within those relationships so you can have more of that excitement and feel like you're oozing and radiating again. I remember I've been through a bit of tough times lately, but I um, I keep reflecting on the times that I was in high school because that was a time when I, due to a health scenario of like getting rash breakouts and just things happening to my body from stress, that I really had to tap into my body. I really had to start listening to all its symptoms. And luckily I had a brilliant mum and a dad that was really alternative and so they weren't really into like the alter the normal doctors and medicine route they were more about like okay well something's going on and let's find the root cause of this and it did nut down to like me doing some food journaling and getting into like figuring out what was good for my body but through the food journaling I also realized how much stress in relationships like with friendships in high school or even just stress through around like boyfriends <laughs> and just stuff going on with like work of school tasks as well that were pressures that were put on at that time. How that got to me and how that affected my emotions and how it affected my body as well. Like I would have harsher breakouts and um, it was like an eczema breakout. It wasn't just like pimples um, or acne, even though that's always so horrible. I'm sorry if you're going through any of that or have been through that but it was more like over my legs and the bigger areas of my body and the skin. But yeah, that's just a bit of a background of how I then started tapping into my body more and more at that young age of a teenager. And ever since then, like I just keep returning to that because whenever I do feel like I've gone off the path and I've kind of lost myself a bit maybe through mid-teens something I mean mid-twenties stuff happened as well within my relationship and then like you know life happens and you lose people that you love that you didn't think would ever pass away really <laughs> and it just all that stuff piles on and so these are three things to help you yourself get back into that feminine so you can feel that glow and the reason I shared my high school times is because that's a time that I reflect where once I got through all that like yucky and started leaning more into my body, I like bloomed. Like I thrived. I was like magnetic. I was feeling sexy. I was feeling confident and all those things that a lot of women I know <laughs> crave. And I did too at some points in like low points. And being a, having been a photographer in portrait studios, so many women would say that in the studio. Like, I wish I was more confident. I wish I felt more sexy. And that's what they came there to feel and be and experience in front of the camera. Because you could show them that to them within a different light and be like, look, you are freaking amazing. Yeah, so the three tips I'm leaving you with today. And please leave any comments below if you have any coming up for you as I share these. Number one is removing distractions. So this is all about stripping back. And I actually only tapped into this a little later in life um, because food was one of the main ones that I listened to my body through, but I'm not gonna cover that today. We'll do that in another video. So these are some extra tips to really just like stop and notice what's going on. So removing distractions really helped me strip back and know what was important to me as well. So this is like overconsumption, just starting to really let go of stuff that doesn't really 
talk to you much <laughs> and that also doesn't support this like future that you have forecasted for yourself or like where you actually want to be and who you want to become so does that align with that no Psh, see you later you know like to start really reducing all the stuff that you own the clutter and I did a few workshops with this with a brilliant woman um, called Kylie the spacious life on Instagram if you want to check her out she does amazing decluttering um, programs but yeah it's just removing distractions and this isn't only just the physical but also just like stuff that's filling your schedule stuff that just like creeps in and starts to take up all your time and sometimes a little bit of deeper inner work need is needed around this because we hold on to them to be liked or we hold on to them for like thinking we need it but really like there's abundance of it and it can always come back if you do need it um one example is like <laughs> i love dressing up so i would keep like all the different crazy outfits and i was like oh i just need to let them go because when it's time to like have another dress up party i'll just go out and source a new outfit anyway <laughs> so i was like right let it go so yeah removing distractions and then that way this brings me to number two rest in silence because once you've removed all those physical distractions and like schedule distractions that are not leading you to what you want to do and be it allows you to breathe <sighs> like you create more space in your calendar in your home you create more space for you to actually be able to sit back and sit in silence and meditate for like maybe 10 minutes. Mine's like 11 minutes a day at the moment is my key juice because I'm a busy mama and I've got this little toddler on me all the time, <laughs> all the time. But yeah, so just carving out those few moments, even if it isn't meditating, even if it's just to like journal for yourself or take a walk in nature on your own so you can nurture your connection to earth. Um, and just resting, like taking a power nap. Those, everyone was talking about that at one point, but I feel like no one talks about that anymore. But power naps are amazing. <laughs> 20 minutes, set a timer, wake up and go. Woo! Because that's like a part of the cycle, of the sleep cycle. So if you do it for 20 minutes, you won't wake up so like groggy like you do after maybe an hour because it catches you at the wrong time and then you're like, I need to sleep more. 20 minutes is key. So I do that frequently. And then silence, like the, the key to the meditation for 11 minutes for me every day is just to like allow the thoughts to stream in as I sit there, I let them go and it's just like you're sweeping your mind and you're sweeping it clean. And what really helps if you keep your to-do list in your head, <laughs> write that shit down, like just get an A sheet for paper put everything down on there, maybe even keep it next to you just in case you're like meditating and stuff pops in your head and you just like write it down and then you can forget it. If it's something you can't forget for to do later, you know, like just do that to help yourself, let it go and like clear your mind for those few minutes. Trust me, you'll feel so revitalized after. And then the third point today, I'm going to get into connected and conscious movement. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> now this is huge I've been doing a somatic course if I like somatic medicine so I've dove into the um, entry course with Maya Knight check her out on Instagram she's incredible but just there was this one session that blew my mind and I'm all about the erotic dancing and like eccentric and ecstatic dancing and getting all those like energies out of you and like letting it go. And I did like Kinergy for a while with Julia Howe and that was also awesome and expressive because she combines imagination, your movement and your breath, which are powerful tools to like shift your state. So if you haven't heard of that, shifting your state is based on your physiology and Tony Robbins talks about this too. So shifting your state can be done by moving your body so your physiology, which is mostly around like the posture and how you're breathing. So leaning back, you know, the superhero posture that you've heard about maybe when you're standing like straight out, hands wide, feet wide, strong for maybe 30 seconds and you feel more confident. <laughs> Deep breathing. It's what you focus on mentally because that will also, like it's vice versa, how your body sits affects how you think and what you think affects how your posture comes through 
So then what you're focusing on, so reframing whatever your situation is, getting through it, looking at it on the bright side, finding a solution. And then also the words you're using, so powerful. That's like the triangle that Tony Robbins teaches. The focus, the words, the language, and then the physiology of your actual body and movement. But back to this third point on connected movement. I want you to notice how you're walking through life. And if you can stay, like think of that triangle to like shift your state. If you're maybe slouching, you're kind of getting tense in the shoulders, you're starting to doubt yourself in your dreams, you're scrolling and you're just like, hang on a minute, where's my breath? How am I walking in this moment? Like even if you're not physically walking step by step, how are you in that time, in that moment, walking through your life, you know, like in a, um, what's the word? <laughs> like a metaphor way of walking through life. But also notice how you're walking through life, like physically. I realized when I did this exercise that my shoulders were so tense and back. Like I thought I was like, yeah, I'm holding my, my healthy posture. But then I'd be walking, like my hips would move, but my shoulders were just kind of like stationary. And it looks really funny if you actually like observe it. <laughs> Instead of allowing my shoulders to follow with the movement and be really organic and like a lot more feminine and like oh, just getting the whole body in sync with itself. So like your feet lead and then you're like, oh, hi, there's the shoulder move. <laughs> And realizing how good that feels as well as you move through. Oh, so good. If you want to go deeper with this, I'm going to be bringing out more um, like mini sessions you can download and also practices for these body movements. And there's a program coming up, so keep your eyes peeled. I'm going to jump in here and add in as well, because when I stopped recording, I was like, ah, oh, I forgot this big point on the last one. The reason I can see how powerful this body work is. It's because a lot of us are repressing our emotions. So there's reasons for that. So let's say you are doing your job at work and um, your boss says like, hey, can you get this done in the next hour? And you're just like, oh my goodness, I better have this other task to do as well. And then you you kind of feeling a bit angry about it and like agitated, but you just kind of shut your lips because you're like, fine, I'll just get it done. In those little moments of repressing your anger and holding it in and being calm and chill, <laughs> those things can pile up. And if you're never actually expressing it, your body's remembering it. Your nervous system is storing it in your body, in your cells, in everything, like every part of your muscles are holding that tension still in some way. So it's so important that we let that shit go. Like if they observe animals and animals are under stress and there's a bit of like adrenaline, they always shake it off right away. You'll watch your dog stand up and just go like it several times a day. We don't do that. <laughs> we should be doing that. Like we're, we're mammals too. We should be doing that. So this is why this is so powerful, like you're shaking off all those extra little baggages, emotions that pile up. But also, even more importantly, if something bigger happened to you, whether you were in your childhood at the time, because that's when it's maybe more of a deeper trauma, because you've forgotten it, you've put it away, you've pushed it away, you're not thinking about it anymore. But it's still there in your body, it's still sitting in your body somewhere. <laughs> and these repressed emotions, yeah, they can block your energy flow. They can make you feel fatigued over time. They can make you feel low on energy, like um, like you just got no motivation or no drive anymore. Or maybe you're just feeling like lethargic and you get brain fog and all these like symptoms start to show because you haven't allowed yourself to maybe feel anger or maybe feel the sadness that came with that. And the grief, like allow yourself to cry. I catch myself so much now. I get itchy eyes and I'm like, oh shit. <laughs> like if it's not directly related to like maybe something has flown in my eye or like maybe there's a cat around because I still have a, they get sensitive around cat hair. 
like I might okay why are my eyes suddenly itchy like am I tired what's going on and then normally <laughs> it's because I have to fucking cry like I just need to let those tears flow and it's hard to like do that on prompt you know but I'm just like okay so clearly I need to sit myself sit with myself and just feel this and then when it comes you just instantly feel better because that's one way that your body naturally releases that oh comes out tears oh, beautiful and this is why I'm so passionate about yoga as well and why I kind of dove into that in the first place because it's the first step of like opening up our body because when we have all those suppressed and repressed emotions so suppressed are the emotions that you're consciously pushing down repressed are the ones that are subconsciously being pushed down so you're not even realizing it but it's happening Okay, and it can start from being suppressed emotions, like you're consciously going, no, 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 I shouldn't feel that now, I need to focus, to your subconscious is doing it for you, and you're just like, why do I feel this way? Why am I so, like, feeling stuck, and, uh, and everything's so hard, you know? I feel you, I've been there, and I still slide into that sometimes, but I'm aware of it now, and I know how to get myself out of it, and I want you to have those tools too. So, yoga is one of the first steps that you can take to become more aware of your body's feelings and where you're tense, where you're tight. Start to let that flower open. Start to like open up the muscles. Let everything loosen up a little bit. You know, get softer in that sense. And then you like dive deeper and deeper and deeper with maybe some more inner work, some tapping, some other modalities, breath work that really, really help deepen and get those emotions to come out maybe even some form of therapy, whatever you feel works. Yeah, just wanted to leave you with that. <laughs> Remember again to subscribe or give it a like or ask a question in the comments below, even more powerful, and I will do my best to answer them in the next few videos. Thank you.